Hey guys, welcome back. Just getting further into centroids for simple shapes here. Uh, if you remember in the last video, we had these shapes drawn out uh, and we talked, I just wrote where the centroids are, but in this video, I wanna show you actually how to find the centroids. Uh, for simple shapes like this on a test, you won't actually need to derive them. You can just memorize these a couple of numbers. Like for example, for a triangle, uh, the, the centroid is always one third of the way away from the tall side, uh, about the x-axis or the y-axis and or two thirds away from the, the short side of the triangle. Um, but sometimes on a test you might be given a loading uh, that has like a parabola shape or a cubic shape or something and it, you'll need to find the centroid in order to calculate the moments and things like that. Uh, so it's important to know how to calculate the centroid in case you do need to. Uh, so first of all, to get into this, uh, the, the very basic concept of centroids comes from the, the concept of weighted averages. So if we have a couple numbers here, two, four, six, and eight, and we wanna take the weighted average, then you know you just add up all the numbers and divide by how many numbers there are. But this is the actual formula that we use, which gives us just two plus four plus six plus eight, and that's all over one, two, three, four, and that simply just gives us five. And that makes sense, that's just the average of these numbers. Now if we were to plot these uh, on the x-axis of a number line, then we could plot their average x position using the exact same formula. But what we really want to get into is the concept of weighted average. So if we changed the weighting of, uh, of the number of blocks here at each of these numbers on the x-axis, then the average x position of blocks would have to take into consideration of two things. It's the location of the stack of blocks along the x-axis and how many blocks are in that stack. So we would write it like this, where x, like I said, is the, uh, the position along the x-axis and b here would be the number of blocks at that corresponding position. And uh, when, we, when we run this equation, it's going to give us the weighted, av or the average x position will actually be at six. And so that's how we find the average position uh, with discrete sets of information. But if we have something that is uh, continuous, like some shape that we're plotting, then it's also going to have a centroid. It'll be somewhere on the shape. And the way that we do this is we actually have to, we have, we have to do a little bit of calculus here. And uh, what we more or less do is we start out by just taking slices of this object, like a typical calculus problem. And, uh, and then we want to find the, basically we'd find the centroid of each of these slices and we take the weighted average uh, of those to get the centroid of the whole object. Where xi here would be, would really be the, the x uh, location of each of these centroids. And, uh, and a here, ai, is the individual area of those slices that we're taking. And then the bottom here is the sum of area, that's the area of the whole thing. Similar to how the, the sum of all the discrete elements here was just the, the, count, the total count of everything. Um, but given that we're doing this with calculus, what this really tends to is when we set the width of these, uh, when we set the width of these slices to, uh, to something that is infinitesimally thin, then we get the following expression, which allows us to find the actual centroid of the whole object uh, and uh, given any type of possible shape. Uh, now, I haven't mentioned it yet. We've been, I've just been talking about um, x-bar here, the location of the centroid along the x-axis. We could very easily slice it this way too, and, uh, and we could get the following expression for the centroid about the, in the, in the y-axis there. But typically for statics problems, we're always concerned with the we're most often con uh, concerned with the distributed load that's on a beam of some sort of weight, and so we're we're always usually looking for uh, the x bar component of the centroid, and usually we're not too concerned about the y bar. But the exact same process applies uh, to, if you would need to find it for some type of horizontal loading. All right, so given all that stuff, now that we know there's an integral, a little bit of calculus expression here. Uh, let's go and find the x component of the centroid for a triangle. So we know we need to use the following expression, but let's talk for a second about what is dA. So we're going to be slicing up, uh, when we integrate, we're going to be slicing up this triangle into infinitesimally thin little slices here with a width, uh, or with some width of dx and, uh, and a height of, of y, and that's going to give us our, our area, which is going to be dA. But at any point along here for when x, let's try and draw that a little bit straighter, 
for any for any point x, the corresponding y is uh, is one half x, right? One half x. So dA is going to be equal to just uh, one half x times dx, and that's dA. So if we set up our bounds here, uh, we know that we're going to be going from uh, from zero here to three. We're trying to find the this is we're doing the integral on this closed boundary. Uh, we can substitute that in. So we'll write from zero to three. We know we have x here, but we're changing out dA because dA is equal to one half x dx, one half x dx, um, and then down here dA. Again, we're doing uh, from zero to three. And this is 1 half x dx, 1 half x dx. All right, so now it just becomes a pretty simple integration. So we'll just pull out the constants, 1 half from 0 to 3, and that will become x squared dx, right? That's just an x and an x. And then down here we have 1 half from 0 to 3 uh, x dx, simple integrations. Okay, so we do that, uh, we'll get one half, we'll keep the constant there, we do the antiderivative of this or whatever you wanna call it, uh, and that will leave us with one third, it's like the reverse power rule here. So one third x, we raise that to, uh, to the third, and, and then this is on the interval of zero to three. And then down here we have one half, uh, so we'll raise that, so that'll actually be one, one half times one half times x squared. Again, that's just the reverse power rule, we're just raising that by n plus one, uh, and then on the interval of three to zero. Okay, so one half times one third is one sixth times, uh, so we'll sub in that three, so we'll have three to the power of three minus one six times we sub in a zero, so we get zero to the power of three. And then down here, one half times one half is one quarter times uh, we sub in that three, so we'll get three squared minus one quarter times sub in the zero, zero squared. All right, I think we're gonna have to move down a little bit here. Yeah, that's probably enough room. All right, so we'll just simplify this up a little bit. We get, uh, we'll bring it over here. So we have one six, so three times, uh, th three cubed is 27 over six. So we're gonna get 27 over six uh, minus zero. Let's just cross all that out, cross all that out. And then over here, we get three squared. So we're gonna have nine, uh, nine fourths. All right, so if we just reduce this, though, we get or simplify it, we're gonna get 4.5 over 2.25. And if you just do that calculation, we get that's equal to two. All right, and so that is x bar equals two. Uh, now, if, if we look at that x bar equals two, well, I didn't really draw this to scale, but whatever. Uh, the length of the, or the base of the triangle here is three. And if x bar is at two, it's a two thirds of the way over from the short side, or it's one third of the way away from the tall side, right? So two thirds or one thirds, depending on how you look at it. And if we go back up here to our original diagram, that's exactly what I said. The centroid will be two thirds of the way away from the short side, and it'll be one third of the way away from the tall side. So if this is zero and three, then this would have to be two, right? Because this length here would be one one third of base, one third B would be one, and two thirds B would be two. So there you go. Uh, that's that's the, um, we're not going to do all the shapes, but uh, I just wanted to show you that that's how you do it. It's a uh, you, you just do the this integral over the, or you just do a little bit of integration, I guess, to uh, to find it. And uh, this will be useful if you need to, if uh, if you find like a, a shape. Uh, uh, and a test or something where it's like a parabola or a cubic shape or something. You'll actually have to do this if you can't remember where the exact centroid is. All right, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.